He is the best in the business, and it's always great to have a chat to Mick Gearan each week on Racing Pulse. Good morning, Mick. How are you? Mate, I'm well. Things are, are ticking over nicely in New Zealand. We don't have any COVID at the moment, so we're not restricted in, in any way. Um, how are things in Melbourne? Has it got to the stage where you can go to the cafe and get a coffee, Michael? I'm not trying to be ignorant, but I, I, it's hard to keep up with it all. Things had been going very well until yesterday afternoon. Uh, we had a donut day yesterday, but there is one case uh, in a school at the moment, so everyone's got their breath uh, held at the moment. We'll get more information later today, but we had been going extremely well and were due to have some further restrictions on Tuesday, which we were hoping would mean crowds back at the races, but at this point in time, uh, it's a wait and see. But uh, we're doing a lot better than our friends uh, north of the border in New South Wales and Sydney, which is going to be a very, very tough spring carnival for them. And I wonder if that, uh, like Melbourne last year, is going to cause any problems for New Zealand gallopers and trainers heading to both spring carnivals. I had that conversation with a lot of trainers on Tuesday, Michael. We had trials in Auckland at Ellerslie, our main track, and a lot of the big names were there. And nobody gave me the indication they weren't going to go to Melbourne or even Sydney because of the COVID restrictions. They're so used to it and they had so many tries at it last year. So let's go from the top of the ratings. Um, Probabil was back at the trial, her second trial in the space of two weeks. Very heavy track on the inside. Um, Gee, she's become a big mare, Michael. I reckon there'd be no change out of 550 kilos for her. She's a really big girl now. And the hood was off, so they they did put the hood on, which tends to be the thing that switches her on. She looked to me like she's going to need a run. You'd be sort of surprised if she could win fresh up, which could well be in the Menzies uh, in August 28th, on August 28th. So she'll definitely go to Melbourne. So there's no chance she'll go to the invitation, the new race in Sydney, unless, of course, the Melbourne weather deteriorates. So she's favourite for that market everywhere, but she won't be going. So go to the Memsey, then they'll run her through, trying to maybe get her to a Cox Plate. But, of course, they have the option to go to an Empire Road if things don't go well there. Um, also in the same heat as her was Aegon. Now, he's different. He hasn't grown at all. He's still very small. He's, um, he's quite light. Because of that, he'll come up very quickly. Now, he also could go to the Memsey. Now, that's not guaranteed. Now, look how the weather goes and see how everything's panning out but he is going to be set for the Golden Eagle and, and whether he goes to Melbourne and has one race there then goes to Sydney for another race then the Eagle or whether he stays in New Zealand for our first major race which is at Hastings on September the 11th that heads across so Aegon looks very good, looks very nippy still very light on his feet but hasn't grown much. Um, the chosen one was at the trial, I think we just hacked away it was a wet track and um, he was ca- uh, carrying Matt Cameron so uh, Matt's back to riding now for seven months hiatus. Matt was happy with the horse, so was Andrew Forsman. So no concerns for chosen one. He also could go to a Menzi type race, but of course he'll just sit to wait for age this year because he's got so high in the ratings after finishing third in the Caulfield Cup and fourth in the Melbourne Cup that there'll be no more sneaking into a handicap to win at Flemington like he did fresh up last year. So he looks good, looks strong horse. Um, he could be accompanied there by front man who ran third in our derby here. He'll be a horse who could turn up in a good country cup or a good handicap in town and be winning. Of the stars of the show at the trials on Tuesday, this is a name to remember. This is the horse who's New Zealand's big chance for the spring. On Trivia, it's the horse who ran second in the Group 2 Mears race on the last day of the championship. It's very unlucky. Everybody who sits on it, Danielle Johnson, James McDonald, Opie Bosson, all tell me she's the real deal. She's been set exclusively for the invitation at Randwick on October 23rd. She'll be the first of the New Zealand Raiders across. She'll race at Randwick on August 21. They've got to protect her rating, Michael, because if she wins a Group 2 or a Group or a Group 1, she ends up getting too high up in the weights because it's set weights and penalties for the invitation. Very, very fast horse and does handle wet tracks. So lots of pluses for her. She's another one for Jamie Richards and Tiaki. So the other main names to come out of the trials, if there's one to put into your little black book, not that anybody has those things anymore, but put it in the notes on your phone if you want, Imperatriz. So Imperatriz ends with a Z. She's an I'm Invincible filly. She's had two starts, 
uh, won a Group 2 or a Group 3 at a second start and was put aside last year. She's really good. Now, I know how hard it is to go to Australia and win these good Phillies races, but there's enough about her, and she does handle wet tracks, to suggest she could turn up in some of those good Phillies races in the spring over in Sydney. She'll head first to Hastings on September the 11th, but she's one of the few horses you go, yep, she's Australian ready, she can get the job done. Uh, missing from the trials was sort of state. He had a high temperature, but Imperatrix has actually beaten sort of state. It was our best two-year-old. So just look out for her if she does turn up in Sydney. And they were the ones who trialled at Ellerslie. There were plenty of other good ones there as well. Today, at Cambridge, on the synthetic track, old mate Catalyst is back. The horse who, of course, ran alligator blood to a nose in the CSAs about uh, 18 months ago now, Michael. Now trained by Tony Pike, because Clayton Chipperfield has, has stepped away from training. Um, interesting to see how he goes today. Naturally fast horse, always trials well. So Catalyst today could well be looking to race in that same race at Hastings on the 11th as the likes potentially of Aegon and Avantage. So Catalyst today will be very interesting on the synthetic. I think they might try and squeeze one into him to build his confidence before they look potentially at Sydney or Melbourne. Gee, that's interesting. And you mentioned Avantage, and there's Amarillina as well, another couple of the Tiaka horses. Are we likely to see them in the spring? Avantage, no. She, she'll more than likely stay in New Zealand. She actually has a little crack at Melody Bell's record. Melody Bell won 14 Group 1s in New Zealand. I think Avantage is on 8. It sounds like a lot. She might even be on 9. But the Group 1s in New Zealand aren't very strong. The one at Hastings on the 11th of September could well be. But Avantage is so versatile, I think she'll stay home for most of the year and maybe sneak to Melbourne to try and get a Group 1 and maybe an Empire Rose type race. But, of course, they're not easy to accomplish. So she's probably a no. I think she's the more likely to stay home. Amaralina was really good behind Entron Vier the other day. Um, I think there's a good race in her somewhere where she's still low enough for the weight. But whether she's going to turn up in a core field cup is, 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 a, is doubtful. I think she might have a spring where they pick one or two targets for her and let her learn a bit, and then maybe in the autumn they try and find a good race for her to win in Australia because she has nothing left to prove in New Zealand. Of course, she won the Oaks here at Group 1 level. So um, she, Australia will be a target for her. I just won't be jumping on her in her early doors for any of the feature races in the spring just yet. Well, it's going to be good to see our Kiwi friends out here for the carnival once again. And uh, that's speaking about the gallops in the world of harness. Uh, are we seeing some more Kiwis arrive soon as well? Yeah, look, we are. And they're big names. Amazing Dream now, of course, is trained in Victoria. Um, Krug is a horse who had the option to go to a New Zealand Cup. But, of course, in Australia, in, in some sort of odd twist at the moment now in New Zealand, even though it's only on paper, he's still three. So there's a mega night looming at Melton, and I mean mega. October the 9th, Victoria Cup, uh, Oaks, Victoria Oaks, and Victoria Derby. Krug, unlikely to race in New Zealand. He's won three derbies already. He could head to Victoria for the Victoria Derby. Had that confirmed this morning by Crandall Getty, and then stick around for the Breeders' Crown, which is on the 20th of November. So the most glamorous three-year-old, in New Zealand and Australasia for the boys, Krug, could be in the derby at Melton. And on the same night as the Oaks, we had better twist. New Zealand's best three-year-old filly is likely to come. So that night at Melton, 9th of October, likely to see Amazing Dream Victoria Cup, Krug in the derby, and better twist in the Oaks. These are real deal horses, all multiple Group 1 winners. That could be a huge boost to Victoria Cup night which has been a night which has sort of got lost a bit in the last couple of years, Michael. I think the move to bring the Derby and the Oaks there now the harness racing season's changed is going to pay big dividends for harness racing Victoria. Oh, that is uh, great news. And uh, what a huge weekend of racing that'll be here in Victoria then on October 9th, uh, which will be absolutely brilliant, uh, which will be Caulfield Guineas Day into Victoria Cup night. That's a beautiful double-header to do, head from Caulfield out to uh, Tabcorp Melton Park. Uh, Mick, appreciate your time as always, and we look forward to seeing you back over here when we can. Have you got a little sneaky for us this weekend? Yeah, I like on tonight... Um, I... Uh, it's, a, it's a race meeting at Alexander Park where a horse called Temperale 
should be winning, but it, it's odds on, so I'm not going to be tipping you that. Um, there's a horse in race, no, race six, number nine, I think it is. It's called River Boy Sam. That's what I think. I'm, I'm actually calling you from the back of an Uber, Michael, so I haven't got my fields in front of me because they're on my phone. But I think it's race six, number nine, River Boy Sam. It's $11 on opening, $11. If it can hold the trail on all mobile or not, it's a little sneaky cappuccino bet. Just take your cappuccino money, have one less today, put your $5 each way on this. River Boy Sands his name, or something like that. I've said it's in my phone. <laughs> Trained by Steve Telfer. Um, he's the horse to look out for tonight. Alexander Park racing on a Thursday night this week, which is very rare. All right, that is great. We haven't got the fields up on the uh, tab app, so I can't help you out as yet, but we will double that up. But uh, we will be looking for that tonight. Hey, Mick, uh, plenty of news as always. Appreciate your time, and we'll do it again next week. Yeah, thanks, mate. And look, everybody in Melbourne hanging there. We've all been there before, and so, yeah, we're looking forward to hopefully getting over to the carnival so we can all have a beer or whatever else you drink uh, together at some stage. Good on you, Mick. Mick Gearan, best in the business, joining us with all the news from New Zealand. Racing Pulse with Michael Felgate.